Whether you're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet, or deep in the ocean casting nets, fish nerds, fish nerds, fish nerds, it's a podcast. Hello and welcome to the Fish Nerds, a show about fish, fishing and eating fish. A show that's always interesting, usually funny, and mostly true. I'm Clay Groves, Chief Executive Fish Nerd, Licensed Fishing Guide, and your new best fishing friend. Today on the show, we are super lucky because Lawrence Gunther, North America's only blind tournament angler and host of the Bluefish Radio Show is here with us. Uh, and I'll just tell you, the Bluefish Radio Show, this is from his website, features subjects and people of special interest to the future of fish and health and sustainable fishing. Notable interviews include Canadian Commissioner on the International Joint Commission, I don't know what that means. Uh, the NOAA Director of Sustainable Fisheries, Ontario's Environment Commissioner, directors of both the Canadian and, you know what, he's Canadian. So here's our Canadian friend, <laughs> Lawrence. Welcome to the show. I'm good, man. Just like I'm thawing out here. It's freaking cold up here, man. It's freezing. All right, what freezing. part of Canada are you in? The Canada's capital, the Ottawa. Ottawa. Uh, and and so, so those of us who are living in the United States, we don't know what that means. So is it, if, if you're like using the United States as a measure, it's are you direct, north of Minnesota? Straight north, straight north of Ogdensburg, New York. Of New York, okay. Yeah, so. Ogdensburg, New York. So it's like on the Ottawa River. The Ottawa mm-hmm. River flows into the St. Lawrence River there. and, uh, and uh, But just, yeah, straight north of, on Ogdensburg, and you bump right into Ottawa. All right. And so you said it's super cold up there. You guys are suffering with the polar vortex? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Good for ice fishing. But it's uh, windy. It's yeah. windy and cold. That's the, the wind ruins everything. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, I'm an ice fishing guide. I'm on the ice almost every day. And I don't care what the weather is as far as temperature goes. But wind just ruins my day. every day. Especially on the ice, right? Because there's nothing slowing the wind down. So, you know, you can be on the ice and it's always, or on the lake. It's always seems like colder and then when you get on the land and behind the trees it's warm and then you you can't complain how cold the day was because no one's going to believe you right you come home and you're like your face is is flush and on fire yeah yeah now now you're let's 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 just deal with this elephant in the room first right away um (laughs) we need to talk about this you're canadian i'm just kidding you're you're blind right I'm a blind Canadian. Yeah. Blind Canadian, which is like the most polite of all blind people. Yes, yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. So tell me, <laughs> tell me, uh, first of all, you 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 went blind gradually over the course of your life. Yeah. Uh, I was uh eight, eight when I was registered blind mm-hmm. and I was just missing my central vision, sort of reverse RP. Mm-hmm. And then uh when I was in my early twenties, got to the point where um I started having um uh, it was functionally blind like if i went out at night i couldn't see anything or if i was outside during the day in the winter time and i went inside i couldn't see anything so then i figured well you better get a white stick or a dog mm-hmm. and, uh, i hate stick so i got oh, a okay. dog. I, thought, I, thought, I hate dogs so i got a stick. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not walking around with a cane my stick's name is ralphie <laughs> 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 no man i like have a dog right yeah. you know, living in the city can I have a dog go anywhere with a dog that was perfect you got like oh, a little border collie or something what, what kind of dog is it big black lab got him in the states nice big black lab and he came from a kennel that was um that was uh really highly regarded for producing hunting dogs mm-hmm. so this guide dog man it, it, when he wasn't guiding me he was hunting like he was the most amazing hunter. I'd let him off the leash in the ravine, and oh yeah, he did. He could fish too. He'd stand there in the shallows, and every so often his head would bob in and come out with a little minnow. And yeah, everything. I bet he ate it too, right? It's like a, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Well, I mean, well, the labs are are swimming dogs. They got the webbed toes. I mean, they're just built for the water, anyway. So it's yeah. perfect for you. So you you were um, before you were eight years old. Let's go back a little bit. So you went blind. Started going blind around eight. Were you already fishing before that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got pictures of me and my family. Like it looks really funny with cane poles and everything and the funny hats. Right. And yeah, yeah me and my three brothers, my mom and dad. Yeah. I was fishing with a cane pole, like a very, right from the beginning. That's classic way to fish too. They call it Tenkara fishing now. So that way they can charge yeah, a lot more yeah. money for it. <laughs> <laughs> or the cane pole. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, let's make it. Now it's Japanese. So, yeah. um, so as you were going blind, did you keep fishing or did you take a break from it for a while and come back to it? 
I did all that outdoor stuff. My, uh, my one brother that I was closest to age and he went in the whole sports direction, you know, mm-hmm. hockey, baseball, all that. But I went into scouts and, uh, and, uh, and fishing and camping and canoeing, everything outdoors. And I even, you know, got my hunting license when I was uh, 15. Oh, that's and, uh, great. That doesn't scare me at all. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hu- number one rule when you're hunting is you got to ID your, you know, your quarry. You got to know what you're shooting at before you pull the trigger. Right. How do you know? <laughs> no, you know, the only thing I was ever good at shooting was black bears because, you know, they're really big. big, they're really close, right? So, you know, I'd be, uh, I'd go out in the bush and the guy'd say, all right, you stand here and the bear might come out down there and you think you'll see it? And I said, no. So he said, walk me closer. And he walked me closer. So then if I got within 20, 30 feet. Well, oh, you could, can smell them then. <laughs> yeah, they'd smell me, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's insane. So, but let, fishing. Let's get to fishing, though. So, it's a fishing yeah. show. So, so now you're you're you got into tournament angling. I want to hear about a I blind got into that. tournament I, angler. And first of all, what kind of tournaments are we talking about? Well, fishing tournaments, bass, uh, you know, pike, musky, salmon, trout, everything. I got into it because. I mean, I was always just fishing tournaments, just, you know, friendly charity tournaments, but I never made a big deal about it. Mm-hmm. But I, I started blogging about this blind fishing boat thing I invented, right? And right. it was, it was a, a, a plastic folding port boat and I put an electric motor on it and I, I loaded it up with all these electronic talking, beeping things so I could go out and fish. And I did that because I had a talking GPS system finally. That's really, by the way, I, I, was, I saw a video of this on your website, and I put links up at fishners.com so people can see it. You know, cool. it, was, it was a trolling motor, not a big outboard, so people no, don't no, need to be afraid motor. of you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'm only going like as fast as you can walk, right? right. <laughs> and it's a plastic boat, so it just bounces off stuff anyways. No big deal. <laughs> 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 but it was great. I mean, I, I could get back out in the water and then I was blogging about that. And, um, and then, uh, people said, well, you should, you know, you do some more tournament fish. I got invited to do more tournaments. So I joined more fishing clubs because mm-hmm. everyone's looking for a fishing buddy, right? Someone sure. to share the gas with a uh, fill a seat in the boat with. So I said, well, best way to find fishing buddies is to uh, join these fishing clubs. And they're all doing tournaments. So I started joining fishing clubs, walleye and bass. And next thing you know, I'm fishing 15, 20 tournaments a, a year. That's and amazing. doing well, doing and win- well. And winning, you get big paper checks and all the things? Oh, well, I won, I've won some money. Uh, yeah. I've won some money. I have lots of trophies, lots mm-hmm. of trophies and bragging rights. But I, I, I like to say that I can beat most of my sighted competitors most of the time. So I finish, you know, in the top 10, top 20, but at least in the top half of the pile most of the time for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, how good, so, so as a, as a blind angler, your other senses get a little more enhanced, right? I just focus more. You focus more, and but yeah. you can see you're listening better. You're feeling the strings better. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're, you're focusing what's in your hand is your fishing rod and so you, what, what's going on down there. And you're, and you're trying to visualize all the time what's at the end of your line, right? Like fishing is about visualizing. It really what, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you're visualizing. You're thinking, what's down there? What, what am I feeling now? What's that? Is that a bite? Is that a weed? Is that a rock? Is that a gravel? Is that mud? So do you, do you like lures that just bounce across the bottom so you can just really get a feel for the contours of the lake? Or do you like a big vibrating, you know, I start bait with a spinner you, bait. I yeah. always start with a spinner bait because that's my search tool. You can throw it into trees. You can pull it back out. You can throw it into bull rushes. You can pull it back out. It rarely, rarely gets stuck on anything. I've never caught a fish on a spinner bait. No? No, nope, I hate them. I can't figure those oh, stupid man. things out. Well, I just use a white one. Yeah. That, well, you, think, only you think. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bait, so that's a, you, well, you know, to me, I'm it's a search sure tool. It's quite, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a search tool. And then you, you just, you, you can feel the depth. You can count it down. So you can get it. I, I really, it's a way for me to extend my reach, right? My right. feel. And, and then once I figure that forever. out. Yeah. yeah, you can cast it forever. And then, and then I, I'll, I'll change it up. And I'll use some, maybe I'll slow it down with plastics. I do a lot of drop shotting, a lot of jigging. I really like the vertical fishing, the up and down fishing more than the casting. All right. Obviously. I, I like that better myself. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's slower. It's slower. But once you're on the fish, it's the best way to catch them, right? But sometimes well, it doesn't work. But usually it does. If you, can, if you can stay on top of the fish, mm-hmm. I, well, it's, it's more, a preci- it's a precision. That's by the way, that's why I like ice fishing the best. Yeah. Because I like that vertical presentation. I like that visualization you were talking about. And I like the precision. Like I made a hole right here. I'm going to fish this spot and I'm not moving. 
<laughs> like I'm staying <laughs> on that fish. <laughs> So it's, well, if you're on the right spot, my, you know, you're you're on the right spot, and thanks to GPS, you can mark those spots, go back to them, right? But you can, and GPS and sonars. Now, so as a blind angler, yeah, all these tools they make for sighted anglers, all the sonars and ice fishing, it's all made for people who have vision. Do they have? Have they adapted those for for people without vision? They have. They, they have. have. Like, yeah, some of them. Like, there's a guy in uh, in Michigan. He's invented the uh, depth whisperer, mm-hmm. and it's a uh, it's Does a it little go? twenty feet deep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and it, I just plug it into the back of my Laureates, and it it announces every time there's a sudden depth change. Mm-hmm. It'll say uh, sudden change 22, 24, 28, 32. Nice. and or it'll say or it'll say. Shallow water, two feet. Shallow water, two. And it's my boat, so then I'll yell at the guy. Hey, what the hell are we doing in here, man? <laughs> <laughs> but then, so I have that. I have the depth talker hooked up, and then I also flip my Lorance into um, fish alarms, fish beeps. So yeah. then it clicks with bait fish, and it double beeps with big fish, and single beeps for small fish. So I know if there's fish down there under the boat. And I always fish off the back of my boat because I leave the front to my buddy, even though it's my boat. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so I know there's fish below me, right up my feet, because that's where my uh, transducer is for the back fish finder. And mm-hmm. then I know how deep it is because of the depth whisperer. And I'll just say sometimes, hey, stop, stop with the electric motor. And then I'll just throw a, a, a drop shot or a single right down there, right? Boom, catch one every time. That's, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. So cool. So you're doing the same thing the rest of us are doing, just using your your other senses. No big deal. Yeah, no big deal. And you know, really good anglers, they feel the fish bite too. They're feeling and they're you know they're using their rod like a the way it's meant to be used, like a sensing tool, right? Mm-hmm. Most of the time, your fishing rod is a sensing tool. It's a launcher sometimes. Every time you cast. It's for controlling fish during the play when you're reeling them in, you know, when you're lucky to catch one. Mm-hmm. It's for, you know, it's for feeling. Most of the time it's for feeling and, and setting the hook too, right? There's that. There's setting the hook, which is mm-hmm. the assault part where you attack, you, you become, you switch from being <laughs> the prey to the predator. Right. <laughs> but mostly you're feeling around with it. You're, you're feeling what's down there with your rod. That's why they're so damn expensive. They can be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Now the good yeah. ones feel better, right? For sure, they they do. So, and that's and it's funny. Mike, both my daughters have been fishing since before they could walk, and nice. so when they they go fishing, it's they don't even care about using sonars. But no, they, they can feel what's happening underwater, and they will outfish almost anybody because they're doing it fully on sensation. They can they can they can feel the most slight slightest movement in the water on their rods. Not, they're paying yeah. attention. They're really in it, and they don't yeah. fish long. They're, they're, my oldest daughter, her, her, her style of fishing is go out, catch a fish, and take a nap. Like, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but if, if kids don't catch a fish in 10 minutes, the day's over anyway. Well, right? that's, that's how I am. I hate – like I actually don't like fishing. I hate that. My, my least favorite phrase on the planet is that's why it's called fishing. I, that makes me insane. I, hate, oh, yeah. I like yeah. catching fish. I like holding this big slimy thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, fishing itself, it's weird. It doesn't make any sense. It's the dumbest sport ever. I like trying, the, I like trying to figure out the puzzle. Yeah. Well, what's, so, what's the puzzle? What's going on? Well, you, so here, so this actually brings me to my first topic. I want to talk about this puzzle. So we're dealing with ice fishing in New Hampshire right now. And our biggest pre- predatory fish is the lake trout. Do you have them up your way? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so it's our big target this winter. And I'm guiding for them. Now, two weeks ago, I guided. I was on the ice 11 hours. And we, on the sonars, we marked hundreds of these fish all day long. And mm-hmm. they would chase our lures and never commit. We didn't land one. You know no. what you do? You know what the problem is sometimes with lake trout? Yeah, if, they're horrible animals. <laughs> no, they like the chase. And well, if, you, if you stop retrieving, they stop chasing. Well, that's exactly where I'm going with this. So, yeah. so I've been doing some research on it, and I've been doing it wrong. Yeah. So I would start them chasing and I would stop so they would come bite the bait. Yeah. No. But they were doing what you said, right? Yeah. They, as soon as you as soon as it stops, they turn away. Exactly. They'll chase it right up to the bo- right up to the hole. Yes. Right to the hole. So Boom. that's that's exactly right. I just learned this and I'm a guide. Yeah. So so then so I watched this YouTube video and I saw this happen. And I went out yesterday and I drilled a hole in the ice. I marked a fish, dropped my my bait down to the bottom. And a, and a lake trout started chasing it, and I reeled in as fast as I could. 
and the fish came up within like five feet of the hole. And, and slammed then, it. No, I stopped and he stopped. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but <laughs> but I, I brought him up from 60 feet. Yeah. Yeah. And and if I had kept going, he would, he would have grabbed it, I think. Oh, and so yeah. I'm really it's excited. It's the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing. You see it, especially if you're using sonar. And I guess you're using sonar. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 So you see it happening. Yeah, I, don't, I never you fish You want to stop. You want to stop so yeah. they can close the distance. And, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Now, I always say instinct is just because when I'm fishing for like white perch, mm. it's chase stop. And, and walleye, and, and, walleye and, and, same thing. You're it's yeah. like a it's like a cat with a ball of yarn, right? You're always twitching it and moving it around yeah. and teasing well, them. Well, with the white perch, they prefer you to do nothing. Dead like stick. Once once they see it, mm. like I I put the rod down on a bucket. Yeah, and I watch. For, well, you can't do this, but I watch for the twitch and then I pick up the thing. Yeah. Um. So white fish, white fish same thing. Oh, I, so white fish is my nemesis. Yeah, we don't have whitefish. Uh, are are almost extinct in New Hampshire, and uh, they're called. They were using the word extirpated is what Fishing Game wow. said. So wow. a few years ago, I, my friend Dave and I went on a quest to catch and eat all the fish in the state. Yeah, and, and the only one we didn't get is the lake whitefish. Wow. And Fishing Game said, "Give it up. You're never going to see that fish. It's impossible." Blah blah blah. And then, like last year, my friend sends me a live video on Facebook in my favorite fishing lake, which is the worst lake in the state, uh, of a live whitefish. Wow. Yeah. So I, now I know they're there. <laughs> yeah, they're around. Like, we got more whitefish up here around where I live than lake trout. Like, oh, a thousand to one. I so we're always trying that. to encourage people to catch whitefish instead of lake trout. Go after the whitefish. Yeah. But whitefish, uh, they lift up when they bite stuff, right? Because they have their mouths are under their head. So right. They lift, they'll they sucker so almost. Yeah, so you got to, when they bite, they don't pull down on the rod. You don't mm -hmm. feel them bite. They, the rod tip lifts, goes, lifts up, right? So you have to watch your tip pop up okay. when they bite. Like, almost like a crappy. Almost they like bite. a crappy. Yeah, fish are yeah. so weird. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm so glad, though, you knew, this, you knew this lake trout thing that I didn't know. No, not many people do, I don't think. No, because I've been fishing with guides and lots of other people who are good at, and not one of them has ever shown me that technique. Mm. And so now I've got that figured out. And now, so this week I'm taking some kids out and I've got enough sonars for every kid to have their own. Wow. And now it's a game. You see one, you know, you pretend that little fish is going to get eaten. He, what does he want to do? Run away as fast as he can. <laughs> and you do not let that trout have that food. No, you don't want get the, it away from him. Yep. You want the angriest trout you could find. And that'll be the game we play. And the kid, I, my bet is the nine and 10 year olds, catch more fish than their parents man oh man they're gonna have those rods ripped right out of their hands oh man i hope so i sure hope so because <laughs> <laughs> those lakers they hit like a freight train when they hit yeah when yeah. they hit yeah so so we our lake is called silver lake we run a hashtag on instagram called suck it silver lake because <laughs> on any other lake in new hampshire or maine i can go catch lake trout within 10 minutes i got one on the ice Nice. In, in this lake, it's one or two fish a day. is an amazing day for fishing. Hmm. Uh, but people still pay me to go on it. So lake trout, lake trout. You know they don't. They they seem to be struggling a lot of places. They're struggling in a lot of uh, locations and uh, not doing great population wise. I think, you know, the water's getting warmer, and these yep. fish like temperatures in the fifty two, fifty four degree range. True. So so it's it's um, yeah, they're not having an easy time of it in a lot of well, places. In, in New Hampshire, I don't know about you guys, but we have big tournaments. We have like, like next weekend is the Great Rotary Ice Fishing Derby. It's one of the largest uh, ice fishing derbies in New England. And on Winnipesaukee, they'll catch all these fish, and they nail them all to, the, to what's called the fishing board. The largest fish nailed on the board, and the big one wins prizes. So they're taking out all the largest lake trout they can find. So yeah. all these 40-year-old 40 40 year fish yeah, pulled yeah. out and get nailed to a board so someone uh, can potentially yeah. wins prize money. Uh, and I hate that. No, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, it's 2019. We can do a catch and release derby. Yeah. We you can do eat, a digital board. You yeah, know, it's eat that old fish, that old fish that's biomassed, all the nastiness. Oh. The <laughs> well, they don't. And well, it's funny. They don't. No one eats these fish. They get nailed to the board. Yeah. And then they go to uh, the local squat. It's called Squam Lakes Conservation. And they get fed to the raptors. Oh, so boy. they get they get fed to birds. Like, yeah. You know, but the breeders, the, time, the big breeders, the, the big... best fish in the state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
I got some educating to do. We, you know, that's that's what impossible. that's what I try to do with my charity is is educate people about, you know, catch and release. Yeah, they, okay. If you're going to do that, here's some good tips on how to do that. And if you want to harvest some fish for the dinner plate, here's some tips on how to do that sustainably. Well, let's and move I, into that. Let's talk about your charity, and then we could talk about your. All right. All right. So tell me, give me the pitch for your charity. You've got a charity. I yeah. want to hear. About yeah, well, we started Bluefish Canada in 2012, and it's about the water, the blue, and it's about the fish, right? Because you have to think of both. If you're going to have, um, it's about the future of fish and fishing. So if it's about the fish, you got they have to have habitat, they have to have clean water and healthy water. And fishing means, you know, you have to have anglers who know how to catch and release uh, properly and how to harvest sustainably. So we're, we're really uh, focusing on taking anglers and make them a little bit environmental, you know, a little bit conservation minded, because you got to have that understanding. If you want to play in this game, you have to be able to do it with knowledge, with wisdom, Mm -hmm. with ethics, you know, responsibly, all those buzzwords, but you can't, it can't just be a party. And unfortunately when you watch, you know, a lot of those TV fishing shows, it's all about how to catch fish and how to catch big fish and how to catch many fish. Mm -hmm. And, and you more, more and more you're starting to see a little bit of conservation being brought into it because I think people are getting aware that we also have to teach the uh, the ethics of the fishing as well, right? I mean, if 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 the sport is going to withstand the criticism from, you know, from organizations like PETA, then we, we also need to make sure that we're doing it in the right way, the responsible way. We have so many tools now to do it the wrong way or to make mm-hmm. a horrendous mess out of it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's more important than ever, I think, that we, uh, we do it properly. So, yeah, well, that's what we do. We try to educate and, and inspire people to be citizen scientists. We, uh, we're into creating urban fishing nodes. So, uh, you know, you can fish in your city at, at, at publicly sanctioned locations. Oh, by we're, the way, urban fishing. Yeah. Underrated sport. Holy smokes. Is it the best? I mean, it's the access is right there. You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need a boat and no one's doing it. The fish are there. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get your buddies and you know, it's an, it's an evening after work, right? You have five, you know, you leave after work, you go, boom, you're there with your buddies for a couple, three hours or your friends and people yeah. show up and it's a nice, it's a social thing. Well, it's funny on last week's show, Steve McCone, the uh, McConey, the comedian, he said, he said, you go on, he's, he fishes in, in Manhattan all the time. And he says, if you go on the subway on any given day, nobody talks to you. Walk on the subway with a fishing rod, everyone talks to you. <laughs> so, Isn't that cool? So you perfect. want to make a friend, and the lesson there is if you want to make a friend, you can walk around with a fishing rod. Exactly. It's like having a puppy. So <laughs> everyone wants to talk to you and touch you. So, puppy, yeah, I have a dog and a fishing rod, man. Uh, I'm, <laughs> people, but people are afraid to touch your dog because it's got the, you know, the vest on. It says, don't pet me. Yeah. No, um, not everyone's afraid, but yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it still draws them in. It still draws them it's in. It's still a cute dog. All right. So you yeah. get this charity going on and yeah. you know, it's all about education and get people to be more better stewards. Yeah. Now in, uh, there's, cause we have a problem in the United States right now where a lot of anglers, I uh, think if you are trying to be a good steward to the environment and you are like some crazy leftist communist thing, like it's the strangest, I, I get in these debates online all the time. Hmm. I'll say, hey, maybe we shouldn't kill all the fish. And I'll go, you commie, you socialist. I'm like, well, (laughs) no, I'm not even thinking in those terms, but somehow I'm getting pegged into these terms. Now in Canada, you guys are a lot more progressive. We we, we say we're a lot more polite, but we're still having those same thoughts. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They're just nicer about what they say about it. More pleasant about it. Yeah. So do you? Do you find that you get pushback sometimes when you start saying, hey, maybe we, for our tournament, we don't want to kill all the fish? Or, You know what? I've been walking down this path now for quite a few years. Like I'm, I really love fishing and I, really, and I have a master's in environmental studies I got a few years ago and, and um, quite a few years ago. And so, you know, I'm, I, I'm tuned into sort of environmental issues and, and I love fishing. So mm-hmm. to me, I, I want to do both. I want to do both. And, and yeah, there's hardcore guys out there that, you know, believe that if you're fishing, you shouldn't, you know, you just go fishing. You don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. And any environmentalist is an enemy because they just want to stop you from fishing. Right. They believe and that. <laughs> yeah, and they believe that. And then there's environmental groups out there that hate, 
you know, that believe that, you know, fishers, anglers are out there collecting science, watching, you know, caring, Mm -hmm. nurturing the environment. But there's a lot of environmental groups out there too that, you know, don't believe in fishing, right? And they don't believe you should ever put anything in the water. You shouldn't even touch it because you might soil it in some way and, and spoil it for the fish. So, As long as I know I'm equally hated by both the extreme environmentalists and those, you know, hardcore right wing anglers, then I know I'm sort of in the mainstream of the middle, you know, that silent majority, right? And that's, that's sort of our, our play areas is the people who just want to, you know, take their grandchildren fishing and pass them on the pleasure of fishing and not have their grandchildren embarrass them with all sorts of questions about grandpa are we hurting the fish? You know? Right. Yeah. Right. So. Well, it's funny. Cause I always tell my kids, look, fishing is violence. It's, yeah. it's an act of violence. You're taking this fish. It's that thought it was gonna have a nice meal and you're yanking it up out into the sky. Yeah. So when you do that, let's be aware of that. <laughs> yeah. Let's not, let's not ignore that. And when we're handling that fish, let's be as kind as possible. So imagine you're abducted by aliens. They can drop you on the ground, kick you around, take a photo and put you back. Or they can gently hold you and take a photo and put you back. That's your choices. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of how we handle it with the kids. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And and you know all those little things like you know don't touch them with your wet hands, don't hold them to your clothes, and wipe mm-hmm. the slime off. The slime is super important to them. You mm-hmm. know, and then they say, well, what about you? Are you hurting them with the hooks? Well, I mean, I, I take a whole bunch of girl guides fishing every spring, 60, 70 girl guides, and they're catching all these pan fish. And I said, look, all these fish are eating other fish. Mm-hmm. And, and, and all these fish we're catching are going to be eaten by other fish. And you think all these pokes and pricks and, you know, dorsal fins and everything with all the pin needles on them and it would prevent them from being eaten. I said, but, you know, if, if it did, uh, there'd be so many of them, but they still get eaten. Right. And they so, get yeah. eaten because... Yeah, because other fish don't mind swallowing those fish with all those pokey bits on them. They can do it. <laughs> pokey bits. I think they get over it fast. I'm like, yeah, it probably hurts, but they don't remember. Yeah, like, and then, yeah. and then if it hurt too much, they wouldn't eat and they wouldn't live and they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't breed. So the 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 softy ones, the the cry babies, don't get. Right? <laughs> <laughs> don't be such a baby. Just eat the hook. Yeah, I'm 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 going to try to get. There's a there's a book out called What a Fish Feels. Uh, and I'm going. Yeah. I've been trying to get the author on my show for a while. I haven't tried that hard, but a couple of emails, mostly yeah. ignored. And he's all about fish have feelings and oh emotions. Oh God! Yeah, there's and a all that stuff. There. Yeah, they there's are, a few but scientists out there that believe the fish, you know, can actually play checkers too. But, mm. but, but I, I, there's a great scientist here in, that I talked to about that. I had him on my show not so long ago, and I, and we we were talking about fish feeling and what they feel. And he says there's a lot of there's a handful of scientists around the world doing not so good science. Lawrence, <laughs> you make a podcast. Let's talk about your podcast. Why do you torture yourself? Oh, why? Because I was promised millions of dollars by uh, doing the, it. <laughs> the, the big podcast money, huh? Oh yeah. All the, all the sponsors that would be lining up and, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 uh, I, you know what though, for me, I, what I like about podcasting and I honestly, God, I don't give a crap about the numbers. I don't even look at the numbers. Mm-hmm. I don't, I make a conscious effort not to look at the numbers. You I don't look at anything. No, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. All right. I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I just, I, for me, it's a, it's an excuse to call up someone I want to talk to. And mm-hmm. when you could say, would you be on my bluefish radio show? Man, people never say no, right? Like, they, they don't. Never, they know. It's amazing. So you they get to talk don't. to all these great people. And I've made all these great friends all across uh, Canada and, and through the United States, all these great contacts now. And yeah. And it's a lot of fun. And until and so you same reason I make my show, it's, it's be exactly that. It's the feedback from the audience and the fact that you could talk to uh, musicians, artists, uh, biologists, fisher people, whoever. You, you now have full access to people. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you, if you edit it nicely, and I always make a good effort to edit, mm-hmm. people love it because in, in a way it's it sort of, it, it, it gives them a little bit of recognition for what they're doing. Right. And Absolutely. They share it with their friends, their family, their organizations, you know, and the, the people, they become your best promoters. That would be the hope. 
<laughs> we always hope that they will. So that's, that's we the, always hope. That's a funny game about podcasting. You should be shocked who doesn't promote. Um, has there anybody ever been anyone who you've reached out to who have said, no, I don't want to be on a podcast? Um, you know, sometimes government scientists, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's been sometimes a little bit tricky. Sometimes the report's coming out of NOAA, getting someone who wants to speak about those reports right now in the United States, right? That's uh, going to be a little bit tricky. And we went through that period in Canada as well. Uh, we had a very conservative government federally, and the scientists were told not to speak to anybody, and, and they couldn't talk to anyone at so all. Not, not their fault. They probably wanted to talk to you. Yeah, they just weren't allowed for their careers. And, yeah. uh, and other, otherwise, I'd, I'd say most people are great. The ones I have the most trouble with are, are professors. Oh, yeah, I hate those guys. Because you ask them a question, and they, their answer is 30 minutes long. Well, and that, so you need to manage your people. Let's, I, we, have, oh, we have professors on, you know, Doc Martin's a professor. And, and yeah. she's like that. You'll ask her one question. She's fabulous, but you do get the whole answer. Yeah, it's oh. a lecture. It becomes a lecture, right? A, yeah. a classroom lecture. And then you yeah. want to you know, you tell them, look, I'm going to ask you these 10 questions. Mm-hmm. And we got 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. And then you got one question out and it's 25 minutes. But it could be 25 minutes of gold. You know? Oh, it's a lecture. <laughs> <laughs> right, and and people want a con- conversation. So yeah. first of all, what's the name of your show? It's Bluefish. The Bluefish Radio Show. Yeah, and that's at it, and you can get it most places. Podcasts are found. Yeah, iTunes, all that. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you, people listen to this show, it's whatever podcast you're on. Go listen to that show. You'll enjoy it. You do a little more serious show than I do. Like um. Yeah, you know, I'm not having last yeah, you, you you have a lot more fun than I do. That's for sure. I don't know how to do. I don't know how to be serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you've been getting um speaking gigs. You've been you've been traveling around talking to people. Yeah, yeah. But I also made a movie, um, a 79 minute documentary where I really took this interviewing thing to the uh to the you know ninth degree. And I, I went around all over Canada and the Arctic and I talked to people who live by the water, who live from the water. And I said, what's going on with your water? What's going on with your fish? And I got their stories, right? Ten great stories across Canada. And wow. I didn't talk to no scientists, no politicians, no business people, you know. And, and, and people said, why? Don't you want their opinion? I said, no, because their, their opinion you can get on the internet. I, I'm talking to people that aren't on the internet, that don't right. have the communication spin doctors. And these are the people who have a real connection to their water, to their, to their environment, to their fish. Uh, a historic, a long lasting, you know, connection. Those are the stories I wanted to capture. And we, we call it, it's called what lies below. It's on CBC documentary channel. It's been on there for a couple of years and it's soon we'll have the rights to put it up on, on the internet, but we don't have the rights to put it on the internet yet. Cause you got to go through, you know, first the f- uh, film festivals, then the TV and then, and then uh, the internet. In that order, yeah. And so, is it, so you only through CBC you can get it. You can't get it like on your website or anything like that. No, not yet. No, you can you can see at the trailer at whatliesbelow.ca, mm-hmm. and then uh, if you sign up there, we'll let you know when it's going to be on uh, the internet for download. Well, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. That sounds really really cool. <laughs> It, it was it was a it was a, a an amazing experience, but I I can't watch it. I mean, I've watched it a few times. <laughs> I go to a film festival, the film starts, I do, I leave the theater. Right, what good is it for you? Oh, that's I nice. Yeah, I hear myself. Yeah. Oh man, I sound so stupid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, you're maybe you're a little more sensitive <laughs> than people. Yeah, uh, that's amazing. Well, congratulations, that's really cool. Now, are you making a living in the fishing industry? I I um. You know, you can't make a living doing tournament fishing in Canada. You can't make a living. There's a few ways to make a living. You can make a living, you know, selling fishing tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, but really, the, the opportunities to make a living in the fishing industry in Canada are really slim. Like, you know, I look at around and I say, holy mackerel, there, you know, there's a ha- only a handful of people that actually do this full-time for a living. I, I have a full-time gig, you know, and I have my charity. Mm-hmm. I don't get paid by my charity, you know, but the, the podcast pays some money now. And, and, um, but I, I'm hoping that, uh, when I retire, I'll be doing this stuff full-time and something will come out of it. I, I think for sure. I think the podcast is doing well and the charity is really growing. You know, we had a 
banner year in 2018. We got some great funding and uh, great support and great, you know, we really hit our stride with our projects and the products that we're putting out through the charity. People love it. So I, I think there's a lot of growth potential there. And at some point they'll start hiring. Perfect. Perfect. Well, cool. So, um, people listen to your show. They can they can watch your movie eventually. What's the, the the next thing that you want people to take away from getting a chance to meet you on our show? What's the next? Like, what is your takeaway message? You know what? It, I I hear a lot of times like, why do we do the things we do? Right? Yeah. In, in the water, and it's because it's out of sight, it's out of mind. Right? Mm-hmm. We and for for thousands of millennia. We just tossed stuff into the river, into the lake, into the water and the ocean, and it just went away. And it was fantastic. It was like great, magic. Yeah, it was magic. And it, and it never mattered because it was organic material. We never had anything but organic material to toss in, so it was fine. And, you know, I talked to guys who guide below big cities on rivers, and they said, you know, the sewage, it, it, it creates weed growth, and that's fish habitat. It's good. It's good. Uh-huh. But, but now we're throwing in stuff that uh, isn't so healthy, like pharmaceuticals, and, and uh, they're causing fish to lose their sex orientation. Uh, you know, antidepressants are causing fish to lose their desire to, to spawn. Wow. Yeah, mean, just like people. Just, <laughs> yeah, we, oh yeah, like this, I'm, you know, I'm hearing this, and uh, you know, scientists are starting to back this up. So, you know, and then all the chemicals, the fast, the plastics, I think, you know, more and more, I realize that what we need to do is is to try to get people to visualize what's going on uh, below the surface of our lakes and rivers and oceans, and not, not just see it as a, a, a you know Loch Ness monster down below, and we'll stay on top on our boats and jet skis and have fun. You know that there's other things going down, going on down there that we need to sort of visualize. And I'm thinking as a blind person, right? I visualize every day. Like I get out of bed, I open my no good eyes because I don't see anything anymore. I can't even tell if the lights are on or off. Mm-hmm. I open my eyes and I think, where am I? Okay, this is my, <laughs> right? where's, my yeah. dr- there's my dresser. There's my, where are my damn socks? You know, yeah. crawling around on the floor. And, uh, and I visualize all the rivers and lakes around my community. I know them all. And I, I visualize what's going on underwater when I'm fishing. And if I could pass on that sort of, um, that desire to visualize like that, right? And some tips on how to visualize and why we need to visualize the underwater world and get people to sort of start to understand that there's, it's more, the rivers are more than just a trench, you know, to get rid of rainwater and lakes are more than just a place where we, you know, get our drinking water out of that. There's actually a whole world down there that we need to understand better and connect with. And fishing is just a wonderful way to connect because it, we're f- catching, you know, when you're looking at birds with binoculars or deer in the forest through, uh, you know, uh, the window of your car or whatever, that's fine. That's great. But when you, you can't do that with fish necessarily, you got to connect with them another way. And, and, and fishing is a great way to connect with them. And if you can eat a fish, that means you're really connected, right? Because well, you're, you're part of the food chain. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, perfect. That's, that's a great message to end with for that. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, man. My pleasure. Because I, I've been listening to your show and uh, for the last year or so I got onto it. And I think, oh, it's funny, man. I love what you're doing. I love oh, what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you've been, you've been, we've been messaging for like four months to get this interview to happen. I, get, yeah. I got bogged down with, with some health issues and stopped. Like I, every time I record, I, I hate how I sound now. So I've been re-recording episodes <laughs> <laughs> because I'm 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 had to retrain myself how to breathe because my lung failed. Yeah, uh, and so I'm I'm aware of my every breath now, and it's a weird planet to be on. So it sound good. You yeah, sound we got good. we got it worked out. I've been practicing. So yeah, we're yeah. okay. <laughs> that what's it mean for your singing career though? It's over. Well, that was a lot of fun. This is Clay. I'm back. I'm recording the end of this podcast in the noisiest music Starbucks on the planet in North Conway, but just in time. Uh, but hey, that's it. Uh, I'll do all the promos and stuff next week. We've got some new Patreon people we'll talk about, all kinds of fun. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. You've listened to a bunch of fish nerds when you should have been fishing. Special thanks to uh, my family for supporting me while I podcast and do Fishing Quest and all I'm doing all the dumb things that I like to do. 
Uh, very big thanks to uh, Wally Pleasant for making our music this week for the theme song. And of course, thank you to Lawrence Gunther, North America's only blind tournament angler and host of Blue Fish Radio Show. Uh, you can get information on him at bluefishcanada.ca. Uh, so until next time, follow the code of the fish nerd, spawn early, spawn often. Never trust a free lunch with strings attached and swim against the current every chance you get. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks. Whether you're fly fishing in a stream, getting those ankles wet, or deep in the ocean casting nets, fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast. Just for the hell of it. Fry it in a basket or broiled in a pan. Eat it raw like you're in Siam. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. Fish nerds. It's a podcast.